الصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين اما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في شان حبيبه صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم مخبرا وعاملا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاه والسلام عليك يا سيد يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك وسلم عليك يا شفيع المذنبين All praise of Allah who gave us the ability to seek the knowledge of his deen and peace, blessed and salutation be upon his beloved the best of creation through whose wasila and through whose blessings Allah has granted us this deen May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to search for the knowledge of deen with the right intentions. I mean, Bijahi Nabi Yilkumu, I mean. So last lesson, uh, I need one brother just to mention who that we left off, the last point that we mentioned, last lesson. Uh, the third, five different types of water you come, you went on to number three. Number three. You need to start number three. So the five types of water, so first we mentioned the seven types of water which it is allowed for you to uh, use to purify yourself. <coughs> And then was the five types of water further which were divided, which are used in relation to preference. And the first being that water which is pure and which we can use and so on and so forth. Then we spoke about my mustamal, that water which is used, and that water which is tahir mutahir ghair makru, that water which we can use pure itself, it can purify. And there is no karaha, no disliking in there. And that's known as ma'il mutlaq. And the second is that water which is tahir and mutahir makru. That water which is pure, can purify, but there is disliking in it. And there's that water which is clean itself, but it cannot be used to purify again. And that example is given as my mustamal, that water which has been used already. And the definition of what is used water. We spoke about all that already, that what is the definition for used water. So now we move on to the next thing. But before we go to number four, that what is the fourth type of water, categorically, there are certain things more which need to be clarified in this, uh, in relation to um, that water which is used. <coughs> and further on, now we'll speak about the qualities of water. That what are the qualities of water. But here the text mentions here, I mean, that that water also which we are not allowed to use for purification is that water which has been which has come we see that in this country because of the heat we don't find that but in a country where it's hot trees water comes out of trees and sometimes when you have uh, like the starch which is inside the trees if you squeeze that water and juice comes out of that so that water which comes out of a tree even if it is squeezed or not squeezed that water is not allowed to be used for purification. So that's the next point which is mentioned here. That that water which is taken out from a tree. And the next point also here, that that water which... <coughs> you know, water which is... For example, now all of us, children, we all have uh, our Asian food, curry, what we call here. That that's also a liquid. The curry itself, the shorba, what we call, that's a liquid. But because it's got certain things which have been... Now, the water itself is pure. Initially, that's why we eat it, it's pure. But then what <coughs> has made that not allowed for us to use it to purify? Because there are certain qualities of water that when them qualities change, then that water is not applicable for us to use for purification. So the point I'm going to mention now, and then I'm going to go into the depth, that what, is, what are the qualities of water. So the point which is mentioned here is that that water which has been used, like which has been cooked, in other words, shorba, that also cannot be used for purification. So not necessarily to uh, for wudu or any form of purification, that cannot be used either. And the reason being is why I'll give you that now. So, the water now, so basically what is mentioned here now is the water, 
So we've got pure water here now, for example. This now is can be used. This is tahir, it is pure. It is mutahir, it can purify. And there is no disliking in this. Because it is pure water, ma'i mutalaka wa bikul. Now, what are the qualities of this water? Now, the qualities are, according to the Sharia, that when a solid, any sort of solid, mixes with pure water, then there are three qualities which a person must look in and if any of them qualities are gone then that water is not allowed to be used and then three qualities are what? taste, color and smell that water does not have a taste that we can define it by it does not have a color and it does not have a smell so they are the three qualities that for when a, sorry, when a liquid, we are talking about the shorba here that when a liquid mixes in then <coughs> we see that water itself does not have a smell, it does not have a taste, it does not have color just like that what other quality of the water is that it is thin and it is flowing the water is thin and it flows what we call rikat and silan that the water is thin and it flows and it also has no taste, smell or color so these are some qualities of water now how it has been distinguished that that water which is what we call overwhelmed overwhelmed water when water becomes overwhelmed that if a solid mixes in with the water <coughs> then if that water the quality of thinness and that quality of easy flow if any one of them two qualities have been taken out of that then that water is not allowed to be used so for example now we see that for example the water if you were to put something in it which makes it more thick then that water that's, that means that a quality of easy flow and thinness that has been taken away from it for example now toothpaste toothpaste some argue whether it's a solid or liquid but for example if we take the oil for example now oil is a liquid but that easy flow which water has that is not in that it is not in oil just like that the thinness oil the same does not have the same thinness and just like that if a liquid was to mix in with pure water then if for example milk milk is a liquid it has two things about it one is that milk it does not have a smell but some probably do in the sense that in this country because obviously they have they not exactly what we call the uh, original milk which comes from the cows or whatever this goes through many different systems but real milk you go to back home you see that it does not have a smell and it does not have a taste as in a specific taste like how we say something is sweet something is sour something is so so unless something is mixed with it but original milk does not have that so when a liquid which has got there's some technical points now that when a liquid which has got two qualities in it these two qualities that for example milk now when that liquid which has got two qualities when that mixes with water pure water yeah, if any one of them two are found in the water for example now for by milk coming into water now because of that now the milk the water it changes color for example or it changes it, it becomes a smell comes out of it or for example it's a taste has come to it now then that water cannot be used to purify and for example if there's a liquid which has got all three for example like vinegar vinegar has a taste <coughs> vinegar has a color and a smell so when that vinegar for example comes and mixes with water out of them three two have to be found in the water for it not to be allowed for it to be used for purification if one changes it can be used because the substance which is used to mix with the water that contains all three and two of them three have to be found in that water in order for it not to be used for purification and a liquid which has two qualities out of them two one has to be found and that which has three out of them three two has to be found does anyone understand that or is there any confusions if there is you can ask now before we move further say that again say that again okay. so basically that liquid because now we're speaking about water and you don't come across these things uh, where we live in this country because we've got a lot of facilities and it's easy for us but in the even now in countries where they're not so develop, developed as 
um, are here, they come across these faces problems daily. Water is pure. It's got this water has got no smell, it's got no colour and it's got no taste. Another liquid, for example, like milk. Milk, for example, now if milk was to mix in with this water now, and if that, for example, if you put a drop of milk in it, probably won't make no difference. It won't give a taste to this, it won't give a colour to it, it won't give a smell to it. But if that uh, so much amount of it was to go in, and as a result of that milk going into this water, the colour changes, or for example, a smell comes out from that water, or if you were to drink it, a taste was to come to that water, then because it has lost one of its qualities, which is to be free from taste, smell and colour, therefore that water cannot be used for purification. Yeah? And just like that, for example, vinegar, again, vinegar has got a smell, it's got a taste and it's got a colour. So all three of the qualities which water is free from, that is a quality in itself, but for example, them three things, uh, attributes, they are found in that vinegar. Now, if vinegar was to go into water, and even if all three, <coughs> for example, now because of that vinegar going into the water, if, for example, now a slight smell came from that water, a slight smell, we could still use that water for purification. Why? Because the vinegar which create, which contains all three, only one is found in that. But if two of them three were to be found in it, so for example, a smell came and the color it became a color inside the water as well then it cannot be used yeah understand yeah so basically that's what it means in a brief about this issue here about the when the when is the water overwhelmed that we cannot use it then for further for purification for that reason but this final thing you should uh, face it that way because the pages are falling over so if you use all this fine facing that way then uh, this then the pages will keep on flying over because of the wind <coughs> so basically that was uh, the issue of uh, the water when a solid mixes with it and when a liquid mixes in with the water and what qualities and the attributes of water how they change in order for it to be used for purification or whether it cannot be used. But however, it also mentions here as well that when for example certain solids like leaves or I have seen saffron, yeah? when that is mixed with water, even though they are solids and they, may con and they contain smell, they can contain a taste as well, color, but if they is mixed in with the water and as a result the water begins to smell, it gives a smell to water, still we can use that water for purification. So the exemptions are saffron, what we call saffron, yeah? that that can still be used for purification. Why? There's a hadith in the uh, Sahih of Imam Bukhari that where a man, he fell off his camel and he died. And the Prophet ordered for him, uh, for his ghusl, his uh, bathing to be done with water and with lotus leaves. The Prophet Sahih of Imam Bukhari that the Prophet ordered for his ghusl to be done with water and lotus leaves. So therefore the Prophet he regarded this to be clean and pure and not to affect the water for purification. So therefore, for it, if for example, water was to uh, contain that, then that does not affect the cleanliness and the applicability of that water for purification. So that's the that's that part there. Now the fourth type of water. So now we've done the first three. So this comes again into uh, what I just told you about the qualities of water. That was just a sub part of uh, something which I thought was necessary for, uh, to, for you to be known. Now the fourth type of water out the five is which which is the fourth type of water now. So now we're going to speak about the fourth type of water, which is uh, uh, categorically well water. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. So, so what with this with these the first seven which you mentioned, there were seven waters in essence. <coughs> yeah, by the water of the sky, well, and so on and so forth. The next five we mentioned, these are not types as in the seven waters in essence that we can use, but categorically. That even, for example, you have got rainwater here. You've got rainwater here now. When rainwater is on its own, is in that, for example, just say this is rainwater now. 
that's rain water for example now now this water here can fall into five categories it can either be as it is now pure water because why it can clean it is clean itself and there's no disliking in it for example if a cat comes and drinks from that same water then that falls into the next category that water which is disliked but can't purify yeah now if this same water i use to clean myself wash my hands for example now and some water goes back there then that falls under category three which is the my mustamil the used water yeah and now we're speaking about number four and number four is what so do you understand now yeah. so we're not talking about the seven as one by one but any of them seven types of water so for example if we got the sea water here we got the rain water here well water here any of them seven types of water they will fall into one of these five categories and the first one that they can fall into is ma'i mutlaq which is the pure water which we spoke about that which is pure in all angles then either it can fall into category number two which is for example disliked because an animal comes and drinks from that then it becomes disliked though it can't purify but there's disliking the or it can fall into number three which is used water or it can fall into number four which we are speaking about now or five which will come to after that so number four is ma'u najas number four is Ma, we know is uh, water. Have we got them sheets printed? Sorry, forgot. Okay, Don't next apologize. time you come, inshallah, uh, Sufi Muslim Sahib is going to give you uh, some sheets that I, some glossary of words, which common words which we're going to use again and again, so that you can uh, keep them with you as well and you can make notes of further words. So Ma, we said is water. So Ma, najas. That najas means dirty or filthy. So that water which is dirty or filthy. Now there's some maths involved here as well. So it would be uh, those for you who are not good at maths, you need to be uh, sort of uh, concentrating properly now. So when does water become dirty or filthy? So here the is stated here now that in relation to that water which is uh, 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 dirty or filthy is that 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 water that water which a small amount of water that when some sort of filth falls into that small amount then that water is regarded as filthy water now what is a small amount according to the Hanaf, the Hanfi fit a small amount of water is that which is 10 by 10 hand spans so 10 hand spans yeah and a hand span is what arm length because a hand here well, for example now in the Quran it says uh, that all you who believe and you intend to read your prayer then wash your faces and wash your hands up to your elbows so the meaning that the hand is from here from the tip of the finger to the elbow that is approximately depending is about 48 centimeters yeah approximately is 48 centimeters so 10 by 10 so 10 for example arm length will be full isn't it so that meaning from your uh, so arm when, you, when i say hand you could write the definition next to that which is from the tip of the finger to the elbow and that's mentioned in maraqi al fala which is the sharaf nudida as well that explanation has been given that what is a, a hand span meaning from the hand is from the tip of the finger your middle finger all the way to your elbow so 10 by 10 anything less than 10 by 10 is regarded as a small amount of water yeah Yeah. So basically, uh, the next type, uh, what we spoke about, another, so the small amount of water is that, which is 10 by 10. So anything more than that is regarded as Ghadirul Azim. Ghadirul Azim means a Ghadir, in modern Arabic means pool. And Azim means big, so like a big pool. So anything more than 10 by 10 is a big amount of water. For that, the rule is different. So for this, what we're talking about first, that that water, which is Najas, is that which is a small amount of water, which is 10 by 10, that if a any sort of impurity was to fall into that yeah then that water is deemed to be impure not just filthy water that cannot be used to <coughs> now, when we speak in the in the fuqaha i've mentioned that when 
we speak about a obviously a pool of water for example now it can be squared 10 by 10 but then it can be circular as well so a pool could be circular as well so what's the way for a if it was to be circular then what would be the rule that how much does it have to be for circular the circumference of the circle circumference means the round of the circle that has to be 36 arm lengths 36 arm lengths for a circular pool so if you're square it'd be 10 by 10 and if you're circular it'd be 36 arm lengths yep yeah um, no, oh, sorry sorry the hand, hand length. Length. same sorry the I'm going to confuse myself with the arm and hand. So basically the arm, same, uh, the hands which I told you, from your elbow to your finger, that same 48 centimeters, so that 36 in the circumference would regard that to be a small amount. Anything more than that would be a big, so then a different rule would apply to that. And anything more would again come into Ghadirul Azim, a big pool. So a different rule would apply to that. And if it is more than that, so if it is a Ghadir al-Azim, so if it is a big pool, if any filth or dirt falls into that, yeah, you can use it to purify yourself on the condition that the filth is not evident there. Yeah, it's not evident, you cannot see it there. Yeah, it's not evident there in front of you. And if it is, for example, now you're in a large pool and there's filth on one side, it is allowed for you to go on the other side and purify yourself from there if it's a big pool if it's small then there's no way out yeah there cannot be allowed for you to use that for purification but if it's a big pool ghadirul adim then that's the way that how it will be done uh, what the rule is in relation to that for how that should work then you have obviously this water which is still we're talking about still water here now in a in a capacity here then you have the, which is flowing water now flowing water if the purity uh, impurity sorry is evident again in flowing water where the impurity is from that spot you cannot use that for purification and what's flowing water the definition which the fuqaha have given in the ahna for flowing water is that when water flows wherever you take a scoop of water from yeah the next scoop you take will not be from the same place because the water would have flowed so you will take it from a different place so automatically if you stand here when water flows when you take water from here for example when you put the cup in again to take some more water it will not be from that same spot it will be from a different spot because the water would have flowed so that's the definition of flowing water that what water is flowing and in that flowing water where the impurity is evident obviously it will flow further so you should avoid that but any other part of that when it is flowing water you can use that for purification. There's no harm in that. So, uh, so we can use, for example, if Najasat is in one area of the flowing water, we have to use the water before the water reaches the Najasat. We can yeah. get that water. So, for example, now if the where the impurity is, for example, when you got streams or somewhere like that, yeah, and uh, uh, we call it gas, yeah, that where the water is, uh, the, if, so, if some impurity is there, and the water is coming, you avoid that part. And before, you're most welcome to use it. Yeah, and even after it's gone over the impurity and it's flowed more down, as because it's flowing water, you can still use the water. But where the impurity is, you should avoid that part. So basically that refers to that and then the that's the fourth type of water which is the impure water the mountain that just that water which cannot be used in any way or form for purification and then the fifth type of water the final type of category so we got the first category which is the pure water my mutrak the second type which is that water which is pure but has disliking in it that third type of water which is used water then the fourth type now which is filthy water which cannot be used and the only one remaining is called Ma'ul Mashkuk that water which is doubtful Mashkuk meaning doubtful yeah Mashkuk meaning that thing which has Shak in it Shak which has doubt in it now what is Ma'ul Mashkuk is that water from which a 
donkey or a mule has drank from? Is that water from which a donkey or a mule? Mule is that which is between a horse and donkey in size wise. Is a bit different. Khachar what we call in Urdu here. So uh, that which is a donkey or a mule has drank from that water becomes mashkuk, it becomes doubtful. So what does it mean by that? So if there is no other water available, if there is no other water available for you to do wudu from or to purify yourself from, then that water can be used. That water can be used, but after using that to do wudu with, you must do tayammam also. You must do the yamam also that for example now this is doubtful if it is not uh, in the eyes of Allah has not been accepted at least that the yamam has been done so that the yamam will substitute for that so that's why the rule is the usul is here that the the yamam must be done after wudu which has been done with that water which is mashkuk that water which is doubtful yeah So that point is that's uh, the five types of water now have been uh, that part has been completed. So does everyone understand that? Yeah. Any yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's basically donkey or mule, the horse family, camel that wouldn't wouldn't fall into that category. No, no camel, no, camel, no. camel and horse and sheep. That's different. Yeah, that's, different. yeah, that's, that's different. Yeah. This is, this is refers to so donkey and mule has specifically been mentioned. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. For that reason. So if something like that was to be, then that would become under the. Mashkuk water. The next thing now is uh, so that's that. That chapter is complete now. The next chapter which we speak about now is the fasal of sur. Sur means you know what we call juta. There was so many water there, and when somebody drinks from it, that water which is remaining, that's called sur. Yeah, that water which has been drank from. Yep. والماء القليل إذا شرب منه حيوان يكون على أربعة أقسام ويسمى سور. That that small amount of water. You have to speak about small amounts. You speak about big amounts. No point. The sea, for example, now there's about who drinks from there. You can't put a ruling on that or a big river or something. So that small amount of water. That إذا شرب منه حيوان that from which a animal drinks. From which a animal drinks, yakunu ala arba adi aksamin. That that is of four types. It can fall into four categories. That water from which an animal drinks, and it is known as sur, which is that water which one has drank from, is known as sur. The word in Urdu is juta pani. Juta, not juta, <coughs> juta pani. Yes. But obviously the English word for that, the substitute, if, if anyone's got a word in mind, then they can tell me. Is there any word in English for that? Anything fits that? I can't think of any either. So anyway, you can look that up in your own time, so you do find a word. That, so basically that water now says falls into four, four categories. First type is... Al-Awwalu Tahirun مطهر وهو ما شرب منه آدمي أو فرس أو ما يقلو لحمه. The first type of water is that from which the example is given آدمي from which a human being drinks. Though the here is used here that an animal, but we would use it for example here the word حيوان literally means animal here. But how our translation here is mammal. Because we're all mammals, so that's why the first year. But literally, the word haywan for mammal is different. For haywan, normally means animal. Why we refer to animal here? But also, the word is giving an example here that the first type of that is tahir and mutahir. It is pure and can purify. So that when we speak about earlier, so this is again. So the first type of water which category can fall in is that water which is pure and can purify, and that water is which from which a human being, or farasun, or a horse. أو ما يك ما يوكلو لحمه أو any one of them animals whose meat consumption of meat is halal if they were to drink from that water it would still remain pure and could purify
Yeah? So the first is Tahir and Mutahir, that water which is, even though after it has been dragged from, it is still pure and can purify. And that is that water which, from which a human being or a uh, horse, Faras is a horse, or any other animal that whose meat, consumption of meat is halal. His laham, his meat is halal for us to eat. If any one of them animals are to drink from water, then that water would be still pure. So is horse, are we allowed to eat horse? And that's why horse has been mentioned separate. 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 Yeah. That's why horse, horse has been mentioned separate. It, we wouldn't come into that category, it's mentioned separately. For us. Okay, next. Wathani is that water which is uh, najis, impure. لا يجوز استعماله وهو ما شرب منه الكلب أو الخنزير أو شيء من سباء البهائم. That water which is filthy and impure and لا يجوز استعماله and it is not allowed to be used. It is not allowed to be used. And we saw وهو ما شرب منه. It is that water from which has drank. For example, a dog, a kalb, a dog, or khinzid, yeah, a pig, yeah. For example, if that was to drink a from that water, then that water would also become khinzid is the word for it, yeah. That is still that water would become impure and not allowed for us to drink. Oh, such a thing. For example, a land predator animal. You have predators of the sky as well. Carnivore. Yeah, carnivores, yeah. A carnivore, but land predator. So you have the sea ones are different, the air ones are different, the land ones are different. This one here is referring to the land. Yeah. The, so that's the number, so land, the reason why land as we mentioned is the land predatory animals because for example now in the next point here there's what which is disliked before I mention that to you, I just mentioned to you that for example the bird predator animals, for example like eagles <coughs> there when they uh, drink from water for example now then that water we can still, it is disliked to use it but if there's no other option we can now somebody would ask that why has the land predatory animals their drinking been made not allowed for us to use and whereas the uh, air animals which are predators birds the why is there just disliked and not forbidden and the same rule why didn't apply to that is because that the animals of the land the predators they drink using their tongue yeah and their tongue touches that water when they drink and because the saliva of them animals is not allowed that mixes with the water so it is not allowed Whereas the birds, they drink from their beaks and the beak is a bone and the bone is pure but because it is a predator, it only becomes disliked and not haram. Yeah? That's the reason why the difference between the land predatory animals and the predatory animals of the air. So anyway, number two is the, uh, that water which is la yajuzu istimaluhu that water which cannot be used to uh, purify in any way or form is that water which is these things I've drank from. And number three وَثَالِسُ مَكْرُوهُمْ I need to write the Arabic text down No, you don't need to write the Arabic down But obviously you can if you want, if you pick it up quickly, write it down Oh, you don't need to, as long as you just know that what, what, it, what, what we're speaking about So number two is that water which is not allowed And number three was Thalis مَكْرُوهُمْ Number three is مَكْرُوه Disliked إِسْتِعْمَالُهُ مَاءَ وَجُودِ غَيْرِهِ It can only be used if there is nothing else present if there is no other water present Wahua surul hirra is that water for which from which a cat has drank for example a cat wa dujajatul mukhallat a chicken a chicken, a stray chicken. So, mukhallat means, for example, a stray meaning, you know, wild chicken. 
a wild chicken. Okay. Yeah, so obviously what, uh, that chicken which is uh, caged up, a different one to apply to that. Yeah, that would be allowed because why the meat of that is halal for us. So we can't use that, it doesn't matter. But why a straight chicken being a when a chicken because wild, it puts his mouth into anywhere. So that maybe he's putting it into some sort of thing which is impurity and then he puts it into that water. So therefore it becomes disliked. So if you can avoid it, avoid it and use something else. But if not, because it's only a chicken, we can still use it if there's anything else present. So that's why Mukhalatiya meaning a straight chicken. And was sibaul tayr that birds which are predators, which I mentioned the air predatory animals. Yeah, the birds which are predators. Asakri was Shaheen like an eagle or a falcon. Yeah, so that is eagle or falcon. Wal Hadaila Wala Sawakinil Buyut. Or them animals which you would find near your homes, within your homes. Like for example, <coughs> mice. Yeah, like mice or even a snake so again it's disliked but for example now nowadays it was different but for example in other parts of the world in earlier days even about 50 years from today water used to be kept in matke what they call yeah in pots now if they're in the home so it was always open from for example those animals how would you avoid it from uh, for example a snake or a rat for example so now because our deen is of yusr and not usr and in the ahnaf the hanfi the usul is that when two, uh, two, for example, a, a rule can be given, uh, you should give the rule based upon the easiness and not on the harshness. So, for example, now if they were to uh, say that every time a rat or a mice drinks from that water, then that water is not allowed for you to use, then what would the people do? How, how, it would become very hard for them. So, because it cannot be avoided, and another rule applies, for example, now I'll mention this later on, come up again, that for example, when uh, a well, that when dirt falls into a well, then how you have to clean that well out now for example dung of animals that was when the, that for example when that falls into the well it does not make the water impure whereas even a clot of blood would or alcohol would why because that dung of the animals because it flows with the wind and it would be impossible for it not to go in them and it would fall in there constantly because wells are normally next to areas where farming happens so it would be impossible for to avoid that so if it was to be given upon that, the ruling, that every time dung falls into a well, you have to take the whole well out and clean it out, how hard that would that be for people? So therefore the ruling has been given on the usr, on the usr, on the easiness, that if that will not harm the water. So that's how the, uh, the usul, the foundation of the ahnaf, the hanfi school of thought works, that the fatwa is always given on the ease rather than the hardship. So that's the uh, next point which I mentioned to you there, was about the next type of water, which is... Uh, drank from by uh, these such animals that were living for example now but also if a scorpion was to drink from the water that water is fine there's no harm in a scorpion drinking from the water that's also mentioned here as well that if a scorpion was to drink from the water then that would be of no harm to the water that should be used so it's just dislike if a scorpion drinks no yeah scorpion just like and next Number four, what Rabi, what time, Madrid? 41. 41. Oh, you're not past it. It's early here, isn't it? I mentioned four now, the last the sentence of the Madrid. I was assuming it would be eight o'clock because in commentary it's about five to eight, so it's a bit different. And anyway, what Rabi, number four is Mashkuk, that water which is doubtful. Mashkuk. Mashkukun fi tuhuri tuhuriyatihi wa huwa surum bagal wal himar that word which is doubtful again from which a ho, uh, from which a donkey or a mule has drank from fa in lam yajid and if no other water can be reached a ghayra who other than that tawadda abihi do wuzu with it wa tayammam thumma salla then do tayammam then pray so again the rule of that to be applied to that would be to do Wudu with that water which is doubtful, but do the yam also as a precaution that in case it is not accepted, at least you do not substitute for it, which is the yam. So, there are the four types. The first one which is pure, 
the second which is not pure, the third which is disliked, and the fourth which is doubtful. Yeah, so there are the four types of water uh, categories that water can fall into after something has drank from it. So what sort of things drink from it? So that's that part then now. So now inshallah we will pray our maghrib now and then we we'll continue after the uh, namaz inshallah. So the, we cleared the first uh, part uh, which was in relation to the categories of water when somebody has or something has drink, drank from that water so what category does that water fall into when something has been drank from it so we learned that there are four <coughs> categories in which water can be once something has or someone has drank from that water so now the next after this is the chapter here again um, along the same lines that of tahari tahari means to investigate so now we're not going to CID but investigation as in that here it is mentioned that if for example you have utensils, yeah, utensils <coughs> that clean utensils and unclean utensils. That if they were, for example, being put together, if they are put together, and you cannot distinguish which ones are the clean and which ones are the unclean, but there are more, you know, this much that there's more clean than unclean, but which ones they are, you don't know, and there's no way, method that you can find out that which ones are clean and which ones are unclean. So, this don't literally mean by. Uh, for example, uh, the stains on them, but other ways, that for example, something is clean or unclean, utensils are there. So what should you do? It says here, taharra. Then investigate, in the sense that use your instincts, and then whichever way you're wa towards whatever your instincts fall, then you use that. You can drink from that, and you can do vuzu with that as well. That, but the condition is that when utensils are mixed together and you know this much that there are more clean than unclean if it's the other way around then something else applies but if you know that there are more clean than unclean then you investigate in the sense that you then whichever way your instincts fall then you follow that right? whichever your instincts whatever they tell you then if you think your instincts tell you that you know what this I think this is the clean one so if your guman is on that more then you, fo you take that and you can drink from that and you can do wudu with that as well. Wa in kana aktharuha najisan la yatahra. But if, for example, more of the utensils were to be unclean and there were less that were clean then in that instinct in that situation you would not investigate for doing wudu out of them but the only way you could use your instinct would be for drinking the water only would be to drink not to do wudu with them because then you have a uh, substitute for that which is the yamum so you're going to do the yamum instead but for drinking you be allowed to use your instincts to whichever you think is clean out of them and use that to drink but you will not be able to use that to do vudu with that why mean why we talk about utensils for example a pot now a pot itself is not talking about the water in the pot it's talking about the pot itself now when you're going to use that pot and you're going to put water into it obviously because that's unclean the water will become unclean as well then that means that you cannot use that so first thing comes down to the pot which you so this is talking about another water this is using about that thing which you will use for purification that thing which you will use for purification and if there are loads of parts for example and you know that there are more clean than unclean because why for example you know that for example uh, we used five for uncleaning for something and these ten were used for cleaning after but accidentally they've been all put together and muddled up so now there's no way for you to realize which one out of them is clean or unclean so when there's more clean you know this one is more clean but which ones you don't know so then you use your instincts and whichever one you feel is amongst them you pick that you can drink from that and you can do vudu from that but for example you know that out of 15 for example 10 are unclean and 5 are clean 
for example, which ones you don't know. So then you can't use your instincts to pick one and use that for purifying yourself. Because instead you can do the yamum. But because to drink, and that may be your, you need to drink your thirst, you can use your instincts for that and use a pot and use that to get water to drink, not to purify. So that's that point there. And for example, the next point you mentioned here, the last out on this point here, that for example, the thiyab, meaning clothes, if clean and unclean clothes were mixed together, if clean and unclean clothes were mixed together, then what would you do? You would have to do investigation, yeah, and use your instincts then, even if there are more unclean clothes than clean. But in the first instance, it talks about if there's more clean, less clean, or more unclean, less unclean. So in this instance here, even if the uh, the uh, clean clothes which were impure, even if they were more or less, you would still have to use your instincts and your stuff to investigate to use one of them clothes or some of them to wear. Reason being is why? Because reading namaz with them clothes which are doubtful is better than reading namaz which naked. So you would have to pick something up to wear to pray up. And obviously the aura which is from the navel to the knees, at least that much should be covered. So you'd have to cover that with some clothes that are there, for example, you know which ones are pure, which ones are impure. So you'd have to use your instincts, use something, investigate, and whichever one you feel you'd wear, as long as you are covered for the prayer, because to pray without nothing on, that's completely not allowed. Because the condition is one of the sharait of salah, the fard and fraid and the wajibat and the makruhat and the sunan, whatever, they come after. The first thing for namaz is the sharait, the conditions. And amongst them are the satri orat, the cover of the part which must be covered from the navel to the knees. That's a shart of namaz, a condition. And the, uh, the sharait, <coughs> the, the, sh the mashrut is mawkuf upon the shart. Until the sharait are not fulfilled, that thing cannot be established. The sharait, for example, are intention, the qibla, where you're praying must be clean. You must be wearing clean, you must be pure, wudu, your body parts must be covered, which must be covered, the time, waqat, these are all the conditions of namaz. Until these are fulfilled, you can, you can do whatever you want. But if the condition is not full, fulfilled, that will not work. So that's why here is given the example here, that because for the wudu part of purification, there is a substitute to water, which is the yamam. So therefore, if it is that the more are unclean than clean, you can use it to drink, but you can't use it for purification, you do the yamum instead. But when it comes to covering of the clothes, even if there are more unclean there than clean, because the covering of the part is a condition, so reading it covered, with that you start being covered, there's no way. So at least you can use that and maybe Allah's mercy is upon you and what you did, Allah will accept. And you may pick up the clean one, but you have to pick something up to cover yourself to pray. That's the condition. So that's that part then about what would, what would be the instance if... Yes. Yeah, sorry, um, what makes your clothes impure? As we come further, briefly, Najasat. Najasat is of two types. You have that Najasat which is visible and invisible uh, pure, pure impurity. So, for example, now if on your clothes an impurity comes onto your clothes which is more than a certain amount and the uh, old books mention as dirham and dirham then in the size like of a coin for example a 2p coin the fuqaha modern times have mentioned that to be roughly a 2p coin size that if for example the impurity was to come onto your clothes and impurity as in what? for example blood alcohol urination stuff like this if this was to come onto your clothes excrement and is more than that amount and is visible as well then you are, it is impossible for you to read namaz with them clothes. It's not possible for you to read namaz with them clothes. And even if it's a small amount, still the fuqaha differ, but still they say that if there is no other way for you to do anything, then you can pray. But if it's more than that amount or that amount, then there's no way that, you, that has to be clarified, that has to be cleaned. And in relation to the invisible impurity, that's referring to the bodily impurity. For example, now, when a person, uh, for example, he, after having intercourse, the impurity state that he's in, that's not visible. You can't see personally whether he's in that, but you know you're in that state. Yeah, you're in that of jinabat, what they call. 
So that ghusl is wajib upon you. So that's not the type of impurity. Or for example, when a woman, when she comes out of a period, or when a woman comes out of her out of her hairs, or when she comes out of her nifas, which is the post-birth blood. Because the woman blood, these all will come later on briefly, because the woman, the blood that she has is of three types. Uh, for men, it's necessary to know as well, because obviously your wives, you could obviously, these issues come up. The first is, has, which is the period blood. The period blood lasts between three to ten days. That blood, which a woman has monthly, which goes beyond past three and ten or less, that's regarded as period blood. <coughs> then he has nifas. Nifas is the post-birth blood, which lasts from up to 40 days after giving birth. Then you have istihaza. Istihaza is regarded as extra or illness blood. That is that blood that only comes less than three. So it won't be regarded as period, it will be regarded as illness <coughs> blood. Or when ten complete, her period is up to ten, and whatever carries on after ten, that will be regarded as istihaza. Or after her 40 days of post-birth blood, whatever she carries on with, that will be regarded as istihaza, not as nifas or has. So that's the three types of blood. Different rules apply that what a woman can do when she's on certain stages. When she's in has, what can she do, what can't she? When she's in nifas, what can she, what can't she? When she's on istihaza, what can she or what can't she? That will come on to later on, that what she can do, but that's in brief. So again, these are issues which are them sorts of impurities which are invisible. That, for example, a woman, she's in a period when she finishes, ghusl is wajib upon her, compulsory upon her to become pure again. When she's in after nifas, she has to do ghusl again, it's wajib upon her to do ghusl again. Or for example, after when a husband and wife mate, after that is again, you're in that situation. Or after ihtilam, the wet dream, a man again, ghusl is wajib upon him. So these are them impurities which are invisible, but they deem for a person to be impure. He has to purify himself. And then there are them which are visible. And that's that which you can see. Then amongst them, you have Najasati Kubra and Najasati Sugra and Hadthi Akbar and Hadthi Askar. Then impurities which are visible but are minor and major. Then that which is invisible which is minor and major. Yeah, then you have categories amongst them as well. And that will all come as well later on about those things which you can have dirt on your clothes but you can still get away with it. Another thing comes to mind, and Nul Anwar, which is a, a book of Usul al Fiqh, which after Usul al Shashi used to be normally in Madaris. And in there, uh, Mullah Jeevan alayhi rahma, he writes a point, he states that Al Islamu bain al Ifrat wa Tafrit. That Islam is that religion between <coughs> leniency and harshness, which is between that, right in between the <coughs> middle line between <coughs> Ifrat and Tafrit. And he explains this that what does he mean by this? And he gives the example of impurity. That in the time of Musa alayhi salam, the Shariat was so like strict that, for example, if a person had dirt on his clothes, he would have to cut that piece of cloth off and sew something else there. That's how harsh he was. He would not be allowed to wash. In the time of Isa alayhi salam, the Shariat from Allah became easier that even if dirt was there, he would not even have to wash it. He could repay namaz like that. Would be no problem. And ours is that between right in the middle line that it does not order you to cut it away and you cannot leave it. But if you wash it, that's enough. So let's come to my mind because I mentioned this point here because uh, Mullah Jeevan mentions this in Nun and Wa. So that's why, uh, again, our uh, this our uh, deen is again on Yusuf that what we, the everything that we try to do on ease, uh, our religion is and our sharit is upon ease as well. So these things about najasats and different types of uh, impurities. We'll, that comes onto again the chapter comes specific chapter comes for this. All that I've mentioned to you, this is roughly a brief of nearly ten pages that come into that in more detail later on. So that's a brief of that. But so again, back to the point again here that we just finished about them uh, the clothes that when impure and pure clothes come together, what should be the way that we can distinguish between them? What should be used and how can we do it uh, to do? And same with utensils as well that we use for that. So now we've covered water. It's the seven types of water. Then that water which fall into which categories? Five. And then further on, when somebody was to, if it was someone was to drink from that water, what would it, would it come into four? And then there's three instances for utensils and uh, clothes. Clothes meaning why clothes are mentioned? Because obviously clothes you use as your for your prayer. Clothes because why this is all mentioned again. I'm like I mentioned last time that why the purification is mentioned in the first because the Hadith of Messenger tells us in Sahih Bukhari that. 
مفتاح جنا الصلاة و مفتاح الصلاة تهور. That the key to paradise is prayer. So what's the key to prayer? Purity. So that's why the first thing which is mentioned is purity in every book of fiqh. Purity is always mentioned first for that reason, because that's a for everything that's a starting stage. Whether you go to to prayer, purification is needed. For Hajj, purification. For fasting, purification. For everything you need, and zakat itself is purification, because the word is zakat. When somebody does zakat, he is zaki, meaning the one who purifies. Zakat, literally, the word means to purify. That by giving this amount of wealth in the way of Allah, Allah purifies the rest of your wealth. So it's all purity. So that's why this is the and also the person said that the tahara to shatrul iman. That the harat is half of your iman, half of your iman, half of your faith is purification. So that's why we need to learn about these issues. So that was that part clear about the hurry about when we use our instincts to distinguish certain things. The next topic that we will go on to now is in relation to the masail of the bir, the them matters issues in relation to the well. First thing, why are we talking about well for? That because obviously in where we are now these things wouldn't apply here but you never know any time can come upon a human being that where we come and fall into that situation that where these messiahs will become necessary to us that's why every angle is covered and it's good for us to learn these things as well because you never know when or how or when this situation comes upon us tomorrow for example now that uh, we think that the, we can't get thrown out of this country that the uh, this EDL and all this whatever you have but for example tomorrow if this country becomes like that and they tell us all to go back to Pakistan and India where we come from then we're going to be back into farms and all this uh, <laughs> wells as well <laughs> that's what happened so that's why you, you, uh, these Masai you don't know when they can come upon us we may need them but that's why it's good to know these things and plus again anyway Deen itself to learn whatever you can about Deen is is always good there can't be no bad in that it's always good so whatever you learn so this Masai of the uh, well and if you go to Pakistan, India today, Bangladesh, wherever you go, in the subcontinent and other countries of the world, Africa, wherever you go, the wells are that the main source of water for them is wells. Taps and these things are only for them, them people who are very, very, very well off from this country. They go back and they build, put taps in there. Uh, even them taps, they are connected to motors and the motors are connected to an alka and that's connected to a well. They all come back down to well again. So uh, that's why these issues, they can come into use at any time. So that's why it's good to know the issue. So this is now in relation to a well, that for example, if an impurity was to fall into a well, what would be the procedure to make that well pure again? Yeah? So, so what would happen if an impurity was to fall into a well? If it is a small well, if any impurity was to fall into a small well, then all that the water of the well would be have to be taken out in order for it to be pure. That's the first rule. Even if it was blood or alcohol was to fall, this is a small well, is that well which is a, a fixed amount there only. And then when a pure, impurity falls in there, it will stay there. And the water does not go that deep for it to clear the water out automatically for it to get clean. So it is regarded as a small well. And if impurity was to fall in there, the only way for that well to be clean again would be for the whole well to be cleared out. All the water would have to be taken out and then reflushed in there again from, again from the pipes and then that well would be pure. Otherwise it would not be regarded as pure. It's a question, yeah. Sheikh. So with regards to a small well, will the same rule apply? Ten hands found by ten? Or uh, ten hands, but normally in depth wise, because obviously the well, for example, now size wise it would normally roughly be the same size wise what it refers to mainly here is depth now how depth would be the fuqaha have stated again in Murakil Falah has mentioned that water which is for example how deep should it be they say that when a person goes to put his full arm into scoop water out of the well out of the pool whatever it is that he cannot see the base of that water the base of that well or the pool or whatever it is he cannot see the base now sometimes in shallow water you can it may be much deeper than what it is but it looks very close to you that's why they tend to put your arm in that if your arm can touch that base as well so if it cannot reach that and if your eye cannot see it then that's regarded as a larger pool not a smaller one 
So that's 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 that's, that's different uh, rule parts. The same with the well. So if the well is a small well, is that a well where not a lot of water is stored in it, and it is only a small amount. And if any impurity was to fall into that, then the whole well would have to be cleared out in order for it to be pure again. Yeah. So even if you could see the bottom, where you put your whole arm in, it's still deep enough. It's not clustered as a small well. Oh, no. What if it's a light adjacent? What if it's? Adjacent, yeah, khafifa. If it's khafifa, a small adjacent, that which we don't regard as it to be as something major, then that don't make much of a difference. Because here the example is given as blood and alcohol. So if it's blood and alcohol, obviously are those which are the kubra, the, the ghaliza, which is the major impurity, then in that instance, then obviously the whole thing would have to be cleared out. And here again is mentioned here that if dung of an animal, now dung of an animal is normally something which is impure. But here the call is mentioned here that if that was to go into the well, that would not make it impure. Because again, it's something which cannot be avoided. And thus if the ruling has been given, that that would not make the water impure. Yeah. Further on, the second instance is that if, for example, a PIG falls in to the well, if a PIG was to fall into the well, then what would happen again? And even if he was to come out alive, because it was normally applied differently to those which die, uh, those uh, things which die in the well or come out alive, different would be like that. So for a, but for a PIG, a khanzir, even if he was to come out alive from the well, still all the well would have to be cleared out. Because every body part of the khanzir is regarded as impure. For example, for a dog, for example, for dog, a different applies. It mentions that later on that the dog, his body itself, has got a different rule of impurity applied to it compared to its tongue and saliva. But for a pig, a khinzir, it's every part of it, whether it's the tongue or not, whatever part of it is all equally deemed to be impure. <coughs> so therefore, if he was to fall into the well, even if his mouth was not to go into the water, even if he was to come out alive, still the whole well would have to be cleared up. It would have to be cleared up in order for it to be regarded as pure again. And just like this, if for example, a dog or a human or a sheep or such was to die, was to die in the well, then again it would all have to be cleared out again. But if, for example, now if they were to come out alive, for example, if a human fell and they come out alive, that would be fine. And if, for example, now that just like <coughs> this, if, for example, a chicken or a cat, etc., if that was to die inside the well, then 40 buckets would have to be taken out of that well in order for that water to be clean again. Yeah, if a cat or a chicken was to fall into the well, then 40 buckets would have to be used. And if a, a rat, etc., a rodent, if that was to fall in there and die, then 20 buckets would have to be taken out. And if <coughs> an animal dies inside the well, even if it's small or big, and it bloats up inside them, then and when it bloats up, <coughs> it swells, then that 200 buckets would have to be taken out. 200 buckets. First, it stated that all should be cleared. If not, obviously, because for a all, it's meaning that it would become more than 200 <coughs> buckets would be regarded as because the way you clear that would be, 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 be buckets, wouldn't it? So, for example, if in 150 it clears out, that means the whole well has been cleared out. But for example, when you get to 200, and if, for example, there's more water available, then that's regarded as a big well. Then, so therefore, at 200, once you take a 200 out, that's regarded as enough, and that clears out the well. That makes the uh, well pure again. And it's a stupid question, but does the bucket need to be some kind of size or? Again, on this point here, the fuqaha differ on this issue. The habit the bucket should be, but the most common view is that whatever bucket is used at that well, commonly. That's the one that is used. So, uh, so. 
Although it's mentioned in one place that the bucket size in, in some cities is different to others. So then what would be the difference of, of this different opinion on that then? That what size it should be? But <coughs> mentioned overall that whatever is the normal common bucket used there, that's one that should be used to, to use. And 200 applies to that animal or person, something which has died inside the well and it blows up 200 buckets. Otherwise, if chicken, cat, etc. dies in there, 40 buckets. If it's a rat or etc., then it's 20 buckets. And once this procedure has done, then that purifies the well. It even purifies the rope, which is used. It purifies the bucket as well and the person as well. So who's doing it? It, pur it? That automatically, that rule that applies to all, so everyone becomes purified. Everything becomes purified with that. And I mentioned the issue to you about the uh, dung. That only does not refer to only cows, it refers to horses or donkeys as well. If any of that was to fall into the well, as long as it does not become a large amount, which becomes so apparent, then you would have to get that cleared. But otherwise, if it's only small amount, how it falls normally with the visit of the wind, then that would not affect the water. Then here is mentioned that if, for example, uh, animal was to die inside the well which does not have free blood flowing through it if it does not have free blood flowing through it and the example that is given here is that of them animals for example a fish or a frog or other aquatic animals yeah, or mosquitoes or a fly a wasp if these were to die inside the well, then that would cause no harm. That would cause no harm. Sorry, what was the uh, mosquito? A, mo for the, a mosquito or a fly or a um, wasp, frog, fish. frog, fish, or any of the aquatic animals, generally aquatic animals that live in the water, if they were to die in there, that would make a difference. So is that only if blood didn't come out? Or? Initially, it says here that any uh, which blood does not flow in them, or the blood does flow but freely flowing, yeah. Then if they were to die in them, then that doesn't make a difference. Or if, for example, an animal that lives in water, if you were to die in there, then that would make an issue as well. I just ask one question. It's talking of blood, so does blood necessarily has to be red? Because Certain animals don't have red. Well, could it really matter? Because eventually, where is dumb? Dumb is blood. So whether that if whether his blood is uh, uh, red or whether it's yellow, whether it's pink, whatever it is, or purple, as long as it's blood and it's regarded yeah. as blood, then the rule applies to that equally. So obviously, what commonly we see, you know, about some animals, I think I don't know if it's some. I know I did see ones that some animals have yellow blood. I don't know which one it is, but something else. Lizard. Like lizard is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so for example, the blood is blood. So for example, if it's blood, then that blood is impure. The dumb, that's uh, the impure. And then we have, for example, that if a low, if for example, that inside the well, a, a human being falls in the well and he comes out alive, or a halal animal, for example, a camel or a cow, a sheep, falls in. As long as there was no filth on there physically, when they fell in there, it does not cause any damage to the water. For example, if a man, he does not have, for example, a man, he is filled with blood and jumps into the well. Now, if he's got filth on him, then that the, a rule applies to that. If it's a smaller man, it has to be empty because the blood is gone in there. If a man on his own himself is pure, if he falls in there and he comes out, then there's no issue on that. Same with any animal as well, which is halal. Like mentioned here, as a camel or a cow, etc., etc., that's to fall in them, then that would not cause any problem to them. And for example, now another issue here, the final point of this chapter here mentions here is that if, for example, now that an animal falls into the well, no one knows when it fell in there. For example, if someone sees something fall in there, then you could work that out how you do whatever. But for example now, just say an uh, animal is discovered in them, dead. 
then that what happens as a result that that well whatever was the water which was taken out the well whatever that water was used for for the last one day and one night so if it was used to clean clothes the water the clothes have to be rewashed if it was used to do wudu to do prayer then prayers have to be repeated for one day or one night so make a note of that that if no so some a dead animal is found in the well and no one knows when it fell in there and it's discovered for the last one day and one night everything has to be redone again or repeated by these prayers or etc whatever it may be what about if um, a rodent like a rat or something goes in and comes out alive if it falls in there yeah it comes out alive oh then it make a difference that's right yeah that's so halal it right? was only but they are as well yeah there are the rodent wise if the tongue if it touches that yeah. but that's the last point that comes here that if an animal goes into it and he comes out alive and if his tongue and saliva touches the water then the rule would be applied to it as if he was to die in there that's the last point I'll mention that to you again afterwards just after the next point then that point comes so with that also you know the dead animal uncertain time of dead animal being in the water does that apply like for example taking out the water for example the cleaning system uh-huh. of 200 buckets yeah so whatever the animal is obviously you'd have to do that 20 buckets or 40 buckets or 200 buckets or the whole well but if no one knows when it fell in there so then now you you become in doubt of that how long has it been in there so it's been impure we've used it so what happens so if the animal was found in the dead then one day and one night wherever you during that time you have to repeat but if the animal is found dead in there and it's bloated and it's bloated then whatever you done in the last 3 days and 3 nights has to be repeated so if you did wuzu and prayed namaz the namaz would have to be repeated repeat yeah could you just repeat that so if for example an animal whatever it may be you find you find dead in there and it's just dead then whatever you done in the last one day and one night by using that water you have to repeat again and if you find it dead but bloated because it only bloats after time so that means it's been in there for more than a day it's been there for a while then whatever you done in the last 3 days and 3 nights that has to be repeated yeah so if you washed clothes with that or utensils you washed the uh, the plates with that or whatever they have to be rewashed if you use that water to do we'll do to pray then pray that to be repeated again so that's what the rule applies so one day one night or three days three nights depending on the animal whether it's just found dead as a general or whether it's bloated because when it bloats and that means it's been there for longer because it bloats after swells after a while so that means it's been there for longer than a day and night it's been there for three days and three nights so uh, but it's not been there exactly for three days three nights but it's been a, that much amount of time you would have to repeat to iada for what we did in that time most likely you want to avoid you let eat namaz or tarawi or janaza well then you can't do anything about that there's no repeat for that either uh-huh. it's a far out of for the for the prayers obviously you have to repeat them yeah. now for example uh, janaza you've done and there's no way that you can repeat that can you again <laughs> well, i mean uh, will it be accepted well that's up to allah whether he accepts or not yeah. and that's up to in allah obviously because that's something you can't do uh, you can't repeat anyway uh, so the, for example even so that's why you uh, eat the maz as well that same thing again that you can't do again but then again if you were to call it like I know less to a lot of people and even come to the do eat on two different days so on one day if you do it and you know if you find out that someone is dead in the well <laughs> then you can do it on the next day you can do it the mother again so you can get away with it but otherwise generally you don't have to get away with it like that so that you can't do anything with that eat janaza these things you can't juma even uh, you have to pray your zohar again uh, repeat your zohar for the day you can't do the juma again so that's why that's the rule that applies to that anyway so in general So that's what happens that if you find an animal of such inside the well for that time that what happens as a result and the final point that if for example an animal which was to fall in there and he comes out alive if his tongue saliva has touched that water then the same rule would apply for as if he was to die in that yeah like for example to say if a, a dog was to uh, 
But for example, if a cat or a chicken goes in there, and you can tell that his saliva has all been in there and whatever, then you'd have to take out the 40 or the rack 20, etc., etc. That's how the rule would be applied. Yeah. So that chapter then now, all of Wotam has been completed now. Yeah. All of Wotam. So that was just, so we've seen that Islam, the how in detail it goes. And this is a new leda. It comes briefly in here when you go into other books as well. Then it goes into more detail. Yeah. You know, um, we're coming on to the chapter about um, where we could do the Zuru that again, when we come into wudu and ghusl, then the adab uh, mentioned about that, that what, where should you do these things, how you should, where you should avoid etc. Et that comes into each thing as a whole. This is water in general, in general about water, that what water is allowed, what ain't allowed, how is it allowed, when does it become disliked, when does it become haram, so on and so forth. So that is that, referring to that now. The next chapter here now, before wudu, is istinja. Now, istinja, briefly I tell you, don't go to, I can't go into too much detail. His brother is, is, is a red rule already. There's a lot of demonstrations that need to be done, so I don't do that <laughs> uh, too much of that. Although I need a few volunteers, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you briefly, or I can't tell you. And then uh, next week, inshallah, next time I come, then we start with the chapter. In, uh, in that's, that's in more detail, inshallah. So istinja, generally, I'm sure all of you know to do istinja, but uh, briefly, we know that istinja is sunnat. And so what is done now? Yeah. So now we're starting istinja. So istinja, as we know, is a, a sunnat, and the whole purpose of it is that to Istibra. Istibra means to remove any impurity which he may have at his private parts after using the toilet, after a urination or excreting, whatever it may be. That his whole point is that he makes sure that, that parts of his body are pure, again clean. And the condition is that he must be mutmain, he must be assured himself that my parts are clean now. When he has been, that he must be sure that now that this is clean. For him to say that I have done istinja. Some of these points I'll type them up and give them to you. You mentioned some techniques here. That is <laughs> 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 the next time I'll uh so we can type them up for you. I'll the diagram on the board. It'll be a hard one, you have me. So basically uh, then further on it says here yeah, that uh, obviously we know that Istinja is not yeah, some people regard it to be a fard of wudu. Yeah. Some people regard it to be a fard of wudu. That when we do wudu, we have to do istinja as well. But istinja and wudu are linked in the sense that wudu is to purify yourself for prayer. Now, istinja is not a fard of wudu. It does not come into the categories of wudu. Fraid or wajibad, etc., etc. It's something completely different, which should not only apply at the time of wudu, but every time you go to the toilet, istinja should be done. Istinja, and again, some people assume istinja to be only regarded to be done with water. Regarded to be done with water. But that's not the case. The main purpose of istinja is that whatever you use, that the main purpose is that you should be assured that my parts are clean after I have done istinja. And the most preferred thing to use is water. That's the most preferred thing. But for example, in early times, stone was used, leaves were used, other things were used as well to do istinja, but the most preferred method was with water. And the whole purpose is, the ghaz and maqsad of this is, that your private parts are cleaned, and you are assured about it, that it is cleaned uh, when you are done. And uh, further on, mentions here, um, Then I mentioned here, those things which you are allowed to use for istinja, those things which you are not allowed to use. In brief, in early days, and even now some places, I'm sure that, for example, stone, leaves, these things they use for istinja, and water, paper, tissue paper, toilet roll we use here, these are all allowed to be used for istinja. Other things, for example, which is mentioned here, uh, bones, glass, these things are not allowed to be used for Istinja. Yeah. Not, not allowed. Not allowed. 
Yeah. So these things are not allowed to be used for. Uh, is there any other liquid other than water? Uh, you, you again, it comes again to the same category again. What you use to purify yourself? Mm -hmm. That water, is it's the again. Mm -hmm. You use the water to purify it. So it comes into them categories of the water, where it is pure and can purify. Stupid thought. Say if you had like. Uh, Paraffin or, or, or petrol, right? And that's the only thing you got. <laughs> no, you wouldn't be allowed to use that, because uh, so it basically, it's because again, uh, for example, now, is the qualities of water have changed, and you know, so on and so forth. So, petrol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That could be a bit costly, yes. So uh, basically, so these things, uh, what you like to use and what you don't like to use. Uh, this uh, chapter of Istinja, what I'll do is the uh, next time, I'll, uh, inshallah, I'll uh, type up a bit and I'll uh, send it over to Susab and he'll be uh, able to uh, uh, give you and something you could read in your own time. It's very simple. All of you is not to do Istinja, I'm sure, and uh, what to use as well and how to, what the procedure is. And briefly, I'll mention to you as well for next time that what the whole situation is. So inshallah, what we'll do next week is that we're going to start... Um, uh, Vudu uh, chapter and, uh, and then the Vudu chapter is quite long there's a lot of all the different issues of Vudu what's Fardini, what's Wajib, what's Sunnat and the Adab, the Mustahab etc etc so these things we'll inshallah uh, mention uh, uh, next week uh, in two weeks time when we do that so what you have to do is that when we, before we begin that to make sure that you go over all this for next time and inshallah before I begin next lesson of all this chapter, what I'll do is I'll do a random, ask you random questions, so you know, for all of you, so make sure that you go over the all of these. Not test use, because uh, I'm sure you've we'll done it anyway, but just to keep you on top of things, to make sure that you know these things, and you know, they, these things stick with you, and these Muslim Masail. So, inshallah, we'll uh, finish there, and uh, for next time, so that's what you keep in mind, inshallah. Is there any questions anyone wants to ask about anything, that they can ask now, whilst we last five minutes, is there anything you want? If impurity goes on the clothes, as in, for example, blood, if you clean it and the stain is still there, would it class as uh, not permissible to wear? Basically, what the Fuqaha have said is that if, for example, an impurity falls on your clothes and you wash it and wash it and wash it and wash it, but the stain does not go, the stain does not go, but if your heart is, you've got itminan, you're mutmain, you're assured that that part has become clean. The dirt inside that, the color may not have gone, but the dirt has gone. Then you can. But otherwise, ma still, the majority of them do say that you should try as much as possible to make sure that the stain goes as well to be completely assured that the purity has gone. Anything else? Yes. Can I ask you a question regarding stinja, please? Yeah, go on. It, it helped other brothers because a lot of brothers are fasting the G's, and I'm sure that you know you'll be able to give the best answer. You know, when you urinate and you clean yourself, and uh, even after you clean, you clean yourself, there's some drops come out of from your private parts. What should be done in that manner? If, for example, what what is the, again that's in the first page of it mentions here that when you are doing istinja, you should make sure that all the drops, as much possible, have gone before you do the istinja. If it was to happen afterwards, for example, you finish and it happens, you should try to do it again. But if it becomes a constant problem for you, that you do not know when it happens then you ain't got no choice, you can't do anything. But otherwise, if it's something that you think you can avoid, then you have to make sure that all the drops and everything has finished before you do the istinja. I've got two questions. So about istinja? Uh, one with the istinja. Does that mean you have to do wudu for each namaz? And you, yeah. Does that mean you have to do wudu for each namaz? And the other question was that, you know, sometimes you have just done, for example, your kopre, and you just chuck them down for the wash. Now, obviously, when it's in the washing machine, do all the other clothes get in that park or what's the rule with that? About the istinja, the, obviously for example now if a person is uh, even whilst he's done istinja and he's assured now that he's done now he's in wuzu and now for example drops do come out then the danger there is not only for his wuzu to break but then his clothes will become impure as well if it goes over that amount of the, the dirham that we mentioned then his cl clothes become impure as well and he has to do wuzu again and there's a mention as well that for every namaz a person can do wudu again and again if he has to to make sure that uh, if there's a danger that the person by doing that is ill in old age and uh, his uh, illness can increase or there's a danger of him for him to get even more seriously ill then he can avoid doing that 
and some say that he can do uh, the can't be done because the is only when water is not there the wuzu that he done that would be adequate for him and he can have that that's only if he's in a serious situation otherwise we have to do wuzu again and again and again the second is because obviously when you put it into the washing machine I assume that all the clothes will be dirty otherwise when you put it in the washing machine <laughs> so they'll all, and they'll all, get, they'll all be dirty together and they'll all get clean together as well but obviously when you're in the washing machine they'll become pure as well and clean together um, sometimes when Gusal is far as are many people they <coughs> in a state of they put the fingers into especially in Pakistan when they need to use the if for example now a good question is that if for example now a person is in a state of impurity mm -hmm. and that water which he uses <coughs> what the if obviously if he don't know and he's done that then obviously that's his not his fault he's not he does not know what the way this period of state what should be done he should he should drop a bit out of that onto his hand rather than putting his hand into that he should drop water onto his hand to see if the water is what sort of state the water is in if it's cool or what if it's able for him to use for him to do that so that would be the way in order for him to <coughs> sort this or basically find out if the water is hot or cold you know say if you're in a just and the person is clean it and you can't say you're out say it's like you've got there a bit of drop so would you clean it how many times would you clean the like wash the garment would it be three times or basically is a, what we've got is a, it's a tradition it's a good tradition though that whatever you wash, you should wash it three times. This so this three is a sunnah that to do three, three and is a vitr means odd numbers. And obviously the Quran says that Allah likes odd things, odd numbers. So we do it three times. But the condition is that whatever that dirt is, if it gets washed in the first time, and you know it's washed, that's fine. If you've got enough water and you, you, you the water is there for you to use, and to be even more assured, you can wash it twice, three times, five times if you have to, six times, seven times, whatever. The main purpose is that for that thing there to become tahir, to become pure, to become clean and whatever way you have to use to do that whichever way it is you have to use that way to make sure that it becomes clean yeah? Can I just ask a question, might be a silly question but then again it's, it's, it's something that's a communal thing it's uh, I've discovered this back in Bangladesh and maybe in other countries that are of that continent yeah. um, it's buying new clothes, right? brand new clothes now what it is, these clothes, the tradition what I've seen that normal people do, they either just wash one arm or whatever it is, and then, you know, they, they don't wear the coat, clothes being lying or etc. like that, they buy it brand new. You know, like for example, if you went to a sh uh, shop or something like Taylor's, um, uh -huh. rodents been on the clothes or whatever it is. Now, although it's brand new, so you don't know what's been on it, um, cat or something, you know, urinated or whatever it is, you're not sure. The smell is not there, but then again it's brand new. Uh, I've seen traditionally what people tend to do is either wash one leg or if not one arm or something like that, then they just iron it again and just reuse it. I don't know if you've discovered that one. I've heard about that as well. <coughs> yeah, and basically uh, if, again, what regards uh, something, uh, clothes or something which is deemed to be impure, is obviously if something is visible there. For example, like you said, for example, if uh, someone wants to urinate on it, or if a cat wants to walk over it, or do all sorts of stuff. If the, you go buy from a shop, if there's no evidence there of any impurity, then that's regarded as clean. If there's no evidence there. If somebody, <laughs> for his own surety, because there's fatwa, a ruling, then there's taqwa, your own piety. And if a person goes and he still feels, you know what, you don't know where it might be, so I'm going to wash it anyway. He washes the whole suit. For his own surety, that's fine. This one arm and one leg business, this one is obviously that's tradition, isn't it? So obviously tradition is like that's something that person that's their own. There's, there's no value that uh, in Islam there's no value of that to wash one arm or, or something like that. You know, there's, there's nothing like that. So if somebody if there's arm, if there's a impurity on that one arm and you only wash that one arm of the cloth, then that's fine. But if there's nothing there and he just does it for some sort of tradition, then obviously that's got no value in Islam. Yeah, regarding the props here, you know, he said to do wuzu again when you go to would you have to do a finger too or just wuzu? Obviously, you're not sure if the props if it's on your. Obviously, if it, because it's come out your private part now. Obviously, there's a possibility now that that impurity is there as well. So then you have to make sure that that istinja, whatever part of the body is come from, that that is cleaned again. So you have to do the istinja, the purging. The istibra is to be sure that the impurity has gone. So if that you got a feeling, there's any doubt that the impurity might be there in your private parts, you have to make sure that that's cleaned and purified again. Then wuzu is done.
I just hit that button. Yeah, um, because that droplet tends to happen to people of my age, I spoke to the oil man, he says, best thing is put tissue there. Uh -huh. Clean yourself, put tissue there, and when you tend to walk, the droplet comes there, within five or ten meters, then you go back and do it. Yeah, in certain places in India, they have a, a pot in the masjid, around pots with some sand in it. So while they're, while they're in the toilet, the imam told me, <laughs> they walk around with that pot and the droplet goes in there, once they're satisfied, they clean it. <laughs> no, 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 you must be right in that, what yeah. we're saying is, do uh, you want to add to that? Or? Yeah, basically, you know, regarding that issue, um, you know, someone told Najis and I think Sufi Sab as well that you know it says in secrets of his secrets as a ghost Yazam Lidlatana stated that you know if the dr drops keep coming out continuous then just put put a tissue there. Yeah. But but not, you know, put a tissue and you know, put your clothes up but just you know keep it for, for a few few minutes or so if you've yeah, got no, no, time. I suppose for example now what tends to happen is for example now if a person wants to do istinja, he's on the toilet, he's doing istinja now mm. and straight away he wants to do vudu. Mm. That's when the danger is in it, yes, yes. because you might do wuzu halfway through the drops might come up, or after he's in wuzu the drops might come up. Then he's in a situation. But for example, now if a person does not need to do wuzu straight away, then he can do that and he can wait for I don't know ten minutes, he can yeah, wait yeah. for twenty meters, whatever yeah. it is, and be assured that whatever needs to come out has come out. Then he can do his redo his istinja, and he'll be sure that the toilet will come out now, and he can do his wuzu, and that's fine. But the only danger is when you have to do wuzu straight away. Yeah. And some people regard it to be that, they regard Istinja to be part of Wudu, so they do but that. The f funny thing about it, it tends to happen during Ramadan mostly. You know, when <laughs> you're trying to get close, <laughs> you know, you try to close to the Almighty, Shaitan sort of plays with Yeah, well, you use know. different techniques with you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Last question, excuse me for my ignorance. Um, example, if in many madrasas or homes or wherever, um, it's so not to go into the toilet with your left foot, by sunnah to wear footwear, like chappal for example, with your right foot. If the chappal are inside the toilet, what's the best approach? When you, for example, now the best thing would be that, for example, now that if, for example, you walk into the toilet now, it's sunnah to walk in with your left foot, yeah. And if the chappal are inside the toilet, <coughs> inside the room, then you walk in barefooted, and then when you are inside there, mm -hmm. then in the chappal you put your right one first and the left one. Rather than doing it other way, uh, if the chapel are outside the toilet, then you can put the right foot into the chapel first, then the left one, and then walk into the toilet with your left and then right. And if the chapel are inside the toilet, then you walk into the bathroom barefooted with your left first, then the right, and then inside the chapel when you're inside, then you put your right foot in and the left one. Yeah. If that's everything, then we'll finish there. <laughs> ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا ربي بالمصطفى بل لي مقاسمنا وفرنا نعمام ضائع واسع الكرم ربي سبي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك في الكرك كله مين إلهي بحق بني فاطمة تبرق والإيما كني خاطمة أجد دعوة مرد كني والقبول منو تستدعى ماني على رسول صلى الله تعالى على حبيب خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين